Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you this the 17th Sunday after Holy Trinity. The order of service is divine service setting three, found on page 184. We begin with the introduction of our opening hymn with the bells, uh, hymn number 745, In God, My Faithful God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. <coughs> our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy 
and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant to the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Righteous are you, O Lord, and right are your just decrees. Deal with your servant according to your steadfast love, and teach me your statutes. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Righteous are you, O Lord, and right are your just decrees. Deal with your servant according to your steadfast love, and teach me your statutes. Mercy upon us, Christ have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee. We glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we implore you, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the devil and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever.
The Old Testament for the 17th Sunday after Holy Trinity is written in the Wisdom of Solomon, Proverbs, the 25th chapter. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. What your eyes have seen, do not hastily bring into court. For what will you do in the end when your neighbor puts you to shame? Argue your case with your neighbor himself, and do not reveal another's secret, lest he who hears you bring shame upon you, and your ill repute have no end. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver, like a gold ring or an ornament of gold is a wise reprover to a listening ear. Like the cold of snow in the time of harvest is a faithful messenger to those who send him. He refreshes the soul of his masters. Like clouds and wind without rain is a man who boasts of a gift he does not give. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth all their host. The epistle is written in St. Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, the fourth chapter. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine, Sorry, did I miss it? The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. There we go. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. Then he took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, Which of you, having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day, will not immediately pull him out? And they could not reply to these things. Now he told a parable to those who were invited when he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, When you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, Give your place to this person. And then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited... Go and sit in the lowest place, so that when you, your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and, whoever, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee. 
confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Jesus ate with all kinds of sinners. This includes the Pharisees. This morning, he is dining at a ruler of the Pharisees' house. It is stunning how things play out. First, like hawks hovering over a mouse in the field, the Pharisees were watching Jesus. What were they looking for? Most likely it was for him to screw up, to clearly break the law, and thereby invalidate everything about him and his claim of being the Christ, the Messiah. They were waiting to pounce. But as it went, they landed full speed beak into the dirt. Their mouths, in fact, were busted shut. They were left mute. And then Jesus saw a man there who was not well. He had dropsy, which was a disease of water. Think of edema, but worse. He was drowning from the inside out. He was ballooning up with water and without intervention. It likely would have gotten so bad that his lungs and heart would not have had enough room to work. He would have died. He would have died from an excess of water. Which, though it's not mentioned, was a bit ironic because one of the first things everyone would have been doing before they sat down to eat was wash their hands with water. At least according to man's rules, they were all to cleanse themselves with water. But this man, he was drowning. It was the Sabbath, that is Saturday, the holy day, and on Sabbath no work was to be done, none. This is exactly what God said in Exodus 35. Moses assembled all the congregation of the people of Israel and said to them, These are the things that the Lord has commanded you to do. Six days work shall be done, but on the seventh day you shall have a Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire in all your dwelling places on the Sabbath day. Now with these words of God, there is no wiggle room. No exceptions, right? If you ask a Pharisee, they'd say an emphatic, yes, no exceptions allowed. But the truth was, there were circumstances in which one needed to work on the Sabbath, and in which it was permissible. Those times were, not, were when not working, when not doing something, violated one of the other commandments. You see, no commandments explanation allows for the breaking of another commandment. Remember, they are perfect. Perfect love. And so to keep one does not allow breaking of another. So Jesus asked the question, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? We who know the rest of the story know the answer. But if we didn't, what would our answer be? This is where having learned by heart the catechism is so invaluable. If we were to see someone who is physically ill and we have the power, ability, and resources to help them, and don't, what commandment would we be breaking? It would be the fifth commandment, which is, you shall not murder. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. To abstain from helping, even on a Sabbath day, would be to break the fifth commandment. We would not be helping and supporting our neighbor in his physical need. The same can be said of Jesus' other example, the ox. In that case, it would be the seventh commandment. You shall not steal. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not take our neighbor's money or possessions or get them in a way, any dishonest way, but help and uh, but to help him to improve and protect his possessions and income if the ox is left in the well it will die which would not be helping your neighbor to improve and protect 
his possessions and income. This goes even if the ox is your own. For your nearest neighbor's sake, your family, to let the ox die would hurt them and therefore would be a breaking of the commandment. Now, the Pharisees didn't have the small catechism, but they did have the Torah, the law, and the prophets. They had plenty of material from God from which to posit an answer. But what happened? They said nothing. Twice he asked them a question and they said nothing. This is not a good reaction. It either exposes their contempt for Jesus or their complete humiliation. Either they hated Jesus so much that they wouldn't proffer a response or they were so ashamed by what they were thinking that they dared not make things worse. Either case, it wasn't good for the Pharisees. Now remember that it was the Pharisees who were watching him, trying to trap him. But Jesus can't be trapped. But they could. We can certainly be trapped as well. We don't like to think so, but we are trapped by God and His holy law every day. This is because we think of ourselves more highly than we ought. We are full of ourselves. And this is exemplified by the conduct of the Pharisees in today's reading. For they seek to trap Jesus. But they also then, in the same account, the same day, are also trying to promote themselves before each other, jockeying for the best seats at the feast with Jesus. To this, Jesus then tells the parable about a wedding banquet, all to expose them and how they think about themselves before God and each other. Now, a wedding is to be a celebration centered around God's gifts of marriage as well as the couple bound together as one flesh by Him. It is not about the mother of the bride. It is not about the mother of the groom. It is not about the wedding party. It is not about the open bar. And it is certainly not about the guests either. But what happens at too many weddings? It becomes a minefield. Even before the big day, careful consideration needs to be made as to where everyone should sit. Why? Because of what Jesus saw with the lawyers and the Pharisees. Those invited thought about themselves before anyone else. Honor was taken lest they be found, uh, lest they find themselves sitting next to a man who might have dropsy. The problem is that because of sin, they could not properly judge themselves and others. Humility True humility comes only one way, from above, from God. Certainly one can be embarrassed by another person, but embarrassment is not the same as humiliation. Humiliation is to be rightfully lowered in life and then recognizing it to be just. True humiliation is to confess the truth and to submit to it, to admit who we truly are not by our own reason or senses, but by God's judgment, His Word. If we are simply to be embarrassed, just to be embarrassed can still mean that we self-righteously think that things are okay with us and it's the other person's fault. But in such cases, that is not good, where there is one thing lacking, and that is repentance. It is to speak the truth about oneself in relation to others, but more importantly, in relation to God. For the truth does not belong to man. It belongs to God. It can be exercised by men and, and done with others, but the authority 
to do so, to exercise the truth, is from God. When it comes to our lives and their ordering, God has established stations for us to occupy. None of these stations can be earned. They are given as gifts. With them, then, comes honor. Honor from above. Given honor. It is not taken or earned. Even when one pursues a station like husband and wife, father and mother, it is always given, never taken. Remember at the end of the marriage rite, what God has put together, let no man put asunder. Even when one makes the choice, it is still God who permits it and gives it and puts us in it. This is hard to see and accept because too many of us assume a works righteous approach and attitude toward our various stations in life. We imagine ourselves to be self-made men and women. We ignore where our daily bread actually comes from because we think it comes from our doing. And what is our daily bread? Well, again, this is where the catechism comes in so valuably. Everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, home, land, animals, money, goods, a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. You see, it all comes from God. And if it comes from God, He will and does equip us to carry it all out, to take care of it and to tend it faithfully. And He gives it and equips us for the benefit not of ourselves and our own elevation, but for the sake of our neighbor. Because he gives the gifts we have, he is ultimately then the source of all of our honor. In other words, it doesn't matter what others think about us, whether they lift us up or lower us down. It only matters what God thinks of us, that we are faithful, grabbing hold of his word and promises. And so Jesus tells the parable that he does. And because he is telling this parable, it means that it is about God's kingdom. And the one who invites the guests is God. We need to learn our place in this kingdom. And it's not revelative to anyone else around us. Our place is only and entirely determined by the king. What we are given to do is to simply receive to receive his gracious invitation, and to fear, love, and trust in him to put us precisely where we need to be. We all have our places, and he has provided all we need to be content with him and what he gives. There is no need to jockey for anything in this life. We, need, we don't need to keep up with the Joneses in possessions or reputations. We don't need to be recognized for our contributions at home, at work, or in the world. We are given simply to be where God has placed us, and then to be content with Him. It may seem that we are being overlooked. It may feel like we need to take control of things, lest we not get what we assume we deserve. It may be that we need to sit at the kitty table or on the floor with the dogs. But the truth is that if we find ourselves in these places, it must be believed that it is for our good. It must also then be believed that there is no dishonor in the dirt for us who are in Christ Jesus. No, there is only dishonor in rejecting what God has given as a gift. 
There is only dishonor in putting ourselves forward in the presence of the king. There is only dishonor in seeking acclaim and the false honor of men, of putting value on the things of this world over the blessings and promises of God through Jesus Christ. We who put trust in such things will be humiliated and embarrassed for such things never create what we fear losing. Pursuing such things only destroy our relationships with others and the King Himself. We have been blessed with more than we could ever imagine. The greatest is seen in that God the Father created us in His image and likeness. And then in love, after we forsook His gift, sent His only Son into our flesh and blood to redeem us, to bring honor back to us so that we would be healed and resurrected. By water and word, we were drowned to death so that from those waters, those waters of our baptism, we would be elevated to partake at His table, seated in the place of honor. And we are indeed honored, honored by Him to be the made-worthy bearers of His sacred blood. For we are honored by Him to wear His righteousness, His robe, washed in His blood, not because we've earned it, but because He in love gave it to us by His grace. Our true honor comes from Jesus, who was dishonored by all men. He who is God sought not the best seat among men, but the right seat, the seat between two criminals. Eternal life in the flesh he who seemed to be losing everything by dying did so for our sakes. He sought not his own glory. He sought only to fear, love, and trust his Father. To trust him, to put him in the right place. And that right place was our place. In love for us, he was humbled on the cross so that we would be exalted to sit in His kingdom and fare sumptuously forever at His side. He was dishonored on the cross that we would be honored in life, in death, and at the resurrection. So when it comes to judging ourselves, we assume nothing, we claim nothing but our sins alone. And then we assert what Jesus, our King, has done to us and for us. For He has forgiven us. He has honored us. He has called us to be His by His grace and mercy. And in that, we wait patiently for Him in all circumstances. We trust Him to bless us where He has put us and be content with Him and Him alone. In Jesus' name, Amen. We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
We rise for prayer. In our prayers this morning, we continue to pray for Stephanie Martins, who has, received, uh, who has returned home from the hospital uh, after uh, suffering from various ailments. We also continue to pray for uh, Lynn Flint and Cheryl Krieger, David Rathke. Uh, also added to our list this week is Heidi Bramstead, uh, that is uh, uh, Bronwyn's sister, uh, who is in the hospital in Madison. And we also pray for Tristan Lechold as he uh, recovers from oral surgery this last week. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. King of kings, your son came as a servant to save mankind, receiving all authority at your right hand. Give your church, destined to share his throne, faithful hearts that we may serve the world in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. King of kings, bless this congregation, its mission, and all its people. Grant us the ability to accomplish the work you have given us to do. Most especially grant us the unity of the Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit, in the bond of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. King of kings, strengthen fa fathers to devote their households to your word and prayer to bring their children to Christ's font and faithfully to instruct them in regular, uh, regular attendance of the divine service. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. King of kings, your son teaches authorities to receive their positions with patience and not grasp them for themselves. Raise up humble and wise leaders for the good of all, all nations. Lord, in your mercy. King of kings, spare those who are ill, suffering in sorrow, especially Heidi Bramstead, Stephanie Martins, Lynn Flint, Shale Krieger, David Rathke, and Tristan Lechel, and all those whom we now name in our hearts. Comfort them with your promise of constant care and mercy. Show compassion also to the bereaved Comfort them with your promise of a joyful reunion with Christ and their loved ones who have died in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. King of kings, you graciously invite us to join you in the feast of this sacrament. Grant that we would come, taking the lowest place in repentance and pleading your mercy, that our hearts may be lifted up to the honor of receiving Christ's very body and blood. Lord, in your mercy. Yes, o Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death 
and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and the body of Christ given for you the blood of Christ shed for you now the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith throughout this life and the life to come depart in God's peace your sins are forgiven Amen
Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith throughout this life and a life to come. Be part in God's peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. takes away the sin of the world. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The Lord bless you in keeping your baptismal testimony. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you in keeping your baptismal testimony. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you in keeping your baptismal testimony.
Now the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith throughout this life and the life to come. To God and God's peace, your sins are forgiven. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O oh God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you, not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
You may be seated. Lord, blessings to you again this 17th Sunday after Holy Trinity. A couple of announcements to bring to your attention. Uh, we'll have Bible study here uh, momentarily uh, looking at uh, the c- conclusion of Acts 2. So all are encouraged to come to that. Uh, we have a couple of things coming up uh, on the calendar. We have the Brat Fry coming Saturday. So if you've signed up for that, uh, please uh, make every effort to get there. Uh, if you have any questions, talk to Diane and she will get you situated. Good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, wonderful. We have enough people, but uh, we could always use more, and we can also uh, need, we also need more people to buy brats, so uh, that's always good. So uh, come out, uh, Sockville uh, Pig, and uh, for that uh, this coming Saturday. Also, Sunday, uh, after Bible study, is the annual Packer Viking watch game, uh, watch party, uh, uh, tailgating. So, um, whatever's left over on Saturday and, and the like, uh, bring aside to pass uh, something tailgaty, um, and uh, we will uh, gather right after Bible study. Uh, it's a Fox game, so right, I think it is. Uh, yeah, so, so I'll need your computer for that because I don't have a Fox app to do that. So, uh, we'll get that uh, uh, projected up on the screen, and we'll uh, watch the Vikings uh, take care of you guys. So, no, <laughs> yeah, no. All right, we're, we're, hey, we're in first place, so it, uh, it is what it is. So, um, are there any other announcements? Yes, Tom. Uh, I'm filling out the big watching schedule, so anybody who wants to join in for that. Yeah. Yeah, pig watch uh, schedule is uh, up. So, uh, talk to Tom if you are interested in doing that. Any other? I saw. Did I, yes, Julie. Yes, Tim. Uh, just an update on the roof and solar. The vacuum guys were here yesterday. If you look out the windows here, you'll see a big mound of gravel. Uh, they vacuumed the whole roof off, so the roof project part of, of part of this is kicked off yesterday. So if you, if you see equipment and stuff in the lot this week, they know that they can't park anything over the weekend here. But uh, it's going. We're moving forward. Yeah, wonderful. Good. And yeah. also one blur for where did he go? Where did he go? <laughs> he didn't want to say he didn't know what to say. Hunter's in the automotive class at uh, Grafton High School. And they can as a senior they can bring in customer cars. So if anyone needs oil changes, brake work, uh, what else? Suspension, tires, anything like that, if you give how does that work? buy your stuff or they can get it for you um, and then it's they get it at Napa's cost which is like 30% of what you pay over the counter it's, I was surprised um, but see Hunter after after a while if anybody has anything you take it down to Grafton High School they take care of it for you or you can pick it up there a lot of Right. Any other announcements? Seeing none, may God keep you safe at the palm of his hands until we meet again. God bless.